Hello, hello, it is Creature, and it is about fucking time. For the Emperor! Space Marine 2 is good. In fact, I'd say it's easily one of the best games I've played in a while, so let's hope it doesn't go the same way as Helldivers. You had so much potential, and you squandered it. Granted, and I don't see it going that way, since I doubt GW is going to allow Saber or Focus to pull the same shit that Arrowhead did. Ah yes, our players in the PvE game are having too much fun killing the nids. Nerf the heavy bolt rifle so that it makes a LAS pistol look threatening. Sorry, I'm having flashbacks. Space Marine 2 is real fucking good. It keeps the same feel of the original game with some updated gameplay. Instead of it being a cover shooter, it's more akin to Doom Eternal meets Gears of War. I'm a Warhammer nerd, and I'm sure a lot of you are also Warhammer nerds, but for those of you who aren't and have normal social lives and girlfriends, let me break it down for you. It all started roughly around 10 million years ago with these guys- Look, I am not a lore channel. While I may have read and listened to so many lore videos and books that my mind is now just a mini black library, I'll spare you the 10 hour lore dump that is expected when you ask a 40k fan, what is Warhammer? Since the game doesn't do too much beyond visual storytelling and world building to explain what is going on. So I'll give you the broad strokes, and I mean broad strokes, since the game will just kinda sing and do things that me and all the other 40k fans will not only understand, but comprehend with a deeper innate knowledge, being able to perceive the three degrees of deeper meaning behind the simple phrase of no, I must stave off the flesh change, uttered by a HERESY! So, it is currently the 41st millennium, so somewhere around the year 40,000. Humanity is being attacked on all sides by aliens, everybody worships the state religion founded to worship the god emperor of mankind who sits upon the golden throne. Everything is over the top and massive, and most importantly, everything fucking sucks. Our current flavor of Xeno this time around is the Tyranids, a massive devouring hive mind swarm that showed up in the galaxy not too long ago and is wrecking everything everyone shit, and they have invaded another imperial system. So it's up to us as the space marines, the ten foot tall demigods of war, to help turn the tide. And I should also mention that these battles usually range in billions if not trillions of combatants, but it'll only take about a hundred of us to square everything up. Since this is the sequel, Space Marine 1 takes place with a horde of greenskins, think orcs, but instead of beating you to death, they beat you to death while they attack the planet Gaia because the Timbo's got the good scrap. That means it's gonna be some good fighting. And Gaia is Imperial Titans on it. Think of the Statue of Liberty with a whole lot of freedom dispensers and a cathedral on its back. Then Captain Titus, an old guy, and that little bitch Leandros uh, show up and help turn the tide. That is until they find that an Inquisitor has tricked them and was possessed all along and is going to be a demon prince. Did I mention that there's also four Chaos Gods? and demons, spelled with an A, and they all hate you specifically. Anyway, Titus stops the ascension, and after the day is saved, that little bitch Leandros, who should have been killed by Craftworld Beelton had Titus not been a good guy and saved his ass, I swear to god Eldar people, can you not do anything right, reports Titus to the Inquisition, and the game ends. Thanks Leandros, I'm sure the Inquisition will use that delicate touch they are oh so fond of. Oh, it turned out that that specific Inquisitor was also a heretic, and was killed by the Grey Knights, and it turns out that Titus and all of the other space marines he arrested have been put into cryostasis, and then after being saved were then sent to the Death Watch as Black Shields, i.e. the greatest shame a space marine can incur without being a straight up heretic. God, I hope that little bitch got killed, or better yet, taken by the Drukhari to Kamara to become some BDSM elf's new plaything for a thousand years, but I digress. Gameplay. I should also mention that a lot of this is going to be going off of the early release copy because as of recording this audio, the game has just come out in a full release and I just got home from work, so I don't really know. Uh, but from what I have played, it's awesome. And I'll be honest, last time a game pulled the old you thought you played for like an hour after work but now the sun's coming up shtick was Doom Eternal. There are different modes to play the game and they all play a little bit differently, so for right now we're just gonna stick with the campaign. Uh, you see enemy, you shoot enemy, and when enemy gets close, you beat them to death with whatever beat stick you like best. You can use a chain sword, power sword, thunder hammer, or just 
punch them to death. You can parry, block, and dodge enemies. If you pull off a perfect parry or dodge, you can take a critical shot with your sidearm and execute them to regain your shields because we're playing 9th edition Space Marines and Armor of Contempt is fucking king. There's a shit ton of different brutal kill animations from just whipping a termagon onto the fucking pavement like the bitch Zeno it is, to sawing them midair in glorious combat. And all of the big boss enemies have awesome glory kills, and each of the class that you can play in multiplayer also has its own set of glory kills. So there's lots of ways to kill things in many different creative ways in this game. There's even an achievement for getting like 50 different glory kills or something, so this game is a power fantasy and it knows it. The dialogue and voice acting in this game is just perfect. I mean, I can't really complain with everybody sounding like a space marine and talking all stoically. The Codex Astartes does not support this action. But I am looking forward to it. The game is filled with a ton of detail. For instance, all the gun loadouts were all of the different loadout options you could give your intercessors back in 9th, and they even kept a lot of the different variations of the different guns. Everything feels and sounds as over the top as it should be. And if you even go down to your last life, you even get the taken a mortal wound, the symbols, the everything, just all of the detail put into this game. It was perfect. Perfect. Now, I'm about to talk about spoilers in the main campaign, so skip to here if you care. I, I, don't, I don't know why people skipped ahead. Uh, it's a 40k story, but we got some newbies, so for any new people to the setting, uh, when a word is uttered that you may not know, I'll put like a little bit of a description up there for you. You can pause and read it if you want. If not, it's all cool. You start off as a firstborn member of the Death Watch. You are on the planet Kataku, or Ka Kadaku, I don't fucking know. Right as the Tyranid invasion is happening, so you and your team are tasked with launching a virus bomb into orbit. The Nids then break into your Thunderhawk and you are then separated from your team. You get the tutorial and you eventually find each and every member of your team dead, until you launch the virus bomb and then face a last stand and almost get killed by a Carnifex. After getting saved, you wake up to find a chaplain staring at you, and he says that you have been remade into a Primaris, and your status as a black shield has been removed and expunged from the archives, meaning that you have been reaccepted into the Ultramarines. However, everyone around you is a bit weary, and for understandable reason, you're given your first missions and you go and set off. From here, the game can be mainly boiled down to go here, kill the Xeno, and do X, Y, or Z. And while there's a lot of character development and growth between the new trio of Titus, Cherion, and Gadriel, saying that they were suspicious of Titus, Gadriel more so than carry on, which culminates into an astropath being possessed and accusing Titus of heresy. Then Gadriel almost shoots Titus in the head, but they become boys whenever Titus drops the secrecy act and tells them that his old teammate falsely accused him of heresy, which then sat him on the death watch for about a hundred years. Titus agrees to be less secretive, and the others apologize for doubting him. But it's kind of funny, because the chaplain, for some reason, will not get off of Titus's ass. Anyway, we find that the Thousand Sons are also attacking, in order to get the artifact that Titus thought he destroyed in the first game, but the Admech boys found it, put it back together, and have been trying to use it for some anti-chaos purpose. If you can imagine, the zinch fuckery means that all is going according to plan, and it turns out that yes, everything was indeed going to plan. Which culminates in a sorcerer lord being summoned inside of a Necron tomb world, which is on a burial world, which is kind of ironic, and the device that the Admech were making, uh, turns out to cause a massive warp rift. It's it's Zinch. No shit. A large obelisk now stands on the planet, making a miniature Eye of Terror, allowing countless demons and heretics to flood in. And since it is now time to unfuck the situation, since nothing can harm it due to a shield barrier, we have to go on foot and reinforce the troops at the base and see if we can't destroy it. We set up for a last stand with the chaptered standard and slaughter the forces of chaos. But Malum Kato started. We will finish. That fucking Manius Cow. 
Anyway, Gadriel has an idea to take the obelisks, the miniature obelisks, and turn them upside down, which may cause the warp rift to seal. Titus agrees to support it, and Calgar says, fuck her, send it, fucking Sander, dude. After inverting a few totems, we then close the rift, but Imra gets away. So Calgar chases him into the warp, and we chase Calgar. Uh, after beating Imra, we regroup and are then added to Calgar's retinue. We say goodbyes to the boys, and the chaplain, who doesn't like us is apparently gonna come with us and is still shit talking us and he is oh fuck you and the game ends i'll be honest it's a pretty straightforward story even with the zinch fuckery similarly to the last one i think that people appreciate the settings and look more so than the story in these games that's not to say that the stories aren't good there are some sections that absolutely fucking nail the 40k look my lord, our vanguard forces are through the field. Hit them hard, Captain! Yes, lord. All forces! Reloading weapon! Our abomination is gone! In the name of the Emperor, I cast you down! Holy terror! Yeah, I'm thinking we're back. Where Doom Eternal was a soundtrack with a video game attached, Space Marine 2 is a beautiful showcase of the 40k world with a game attached. Both games are fucking phenomenal, but it's the art for this game that really takes it to the next level. And now is a good time to talk about one of the most annoying things in the game so far, the AI. And like I said earlier, this is all based off of the early access version of the game. Maybe they fixed the AI. I really don't have any complaints. And they will try and revive you even if a Carnifex is breakdancing on their spine, so that's also a really good thing. However, it's very obvious that this game was meant to be played with friends and multiplayer. The AI issue shines the brightest in the multiplayer operations. If you go in solo, it will take you around 30 minutes to an hour to beat a single operation, but with other people in your team, it easily cuts that time in half. These operations are the missions that the other Space Marines under Titus were doing during the game, so it's kind of cool to see what they're up to. But with people, it easily cuts that time in half. You'll get rewards from completing the missions that allow you to get cosmetics to either get your favorite chapter or unlock all of the colors to create your own custom chapter. The game even goes so far as to actually list the Citadel paint colors so that you know exactly what to buy whenever you inevitably paint your first batch of minis. The cosmetic items, i.e. the different armor pieces and armor sets, are earned by just playing the game. So to unlock everything, you're just gonna need to either win PvP games or complete operations with each class. There are six in total. You can play as an Intercessor, Assault Intercessor, Reaver, Blade Guard, Eliminator, or a Heavy Intercessor. Each has its own weapons and abilities that get more powerful as you level them up. The rewards can also be used to upgrade and unlock better grades of weapons, which really do make you extremely powerful. For instance, the Blade Guard Vet, one of its first upgrades is to reflect all range damage and return it to sender if the enemy is within 10 meters of you. And it's worth noting that for weapons that are shared among classes, i.e. Chainsword, bolt, pistol, whatever, upgrading a weapon with one class upgrades it for all classes. But overall, the community, from what I've seen, is actually pretty nice. Everyone's on point with the whole brother thing, and everybody knows to work together, but I don't know if that's just the community around the game or all the 40k nerds who pre-ordered it know the fucking mission. But all in all, the multiplayer aspects of this game are great, and I genuinely hope that they add more missions in the future, particularly with that thing that's underneath the burial world that I mentioned in the story section. While the operations are fun, I can tell that they're gonna get real old real fast. You can only play the ops so many times before you get bored, but I guess that's what PvP is for. The PvP is pretty fun. The progression for the classes is a little bit different from the PvE stuff. For the most part, there are no weapon upgrades other than unlocks. Overall, the PvP is pretty straightforward with each class having the same abilities and specific loadouts, but there isn't any upgrades, so everything feels pretty balanced.
balanced. There are, as of writing, three main game modes. They are point capture, point defense, and team deathmatch, and I would not be surprised if they added more on release. So I guess I'll just kind of put something in right here if they didn't. If they didn't, shit. If they did, awesome. PvP is the only time that you can actually really see or use the Heretic Astartes, and there isn't much in the way of customization or any kind of progression with the Chaos side of the game. Luckily, the experience is shared between both sides, so you can still get cool stuff for your loyalists, but I really hope that there is some cosmetics or cool stuff coming out for Chaos soon. But overall, it does well, and again, I am recording this before even playing the release version of the game, and we'll see if anything changes. It's a great game. I highly recommend you buy it. It is awesome. It's a straightforward, fun game. There isn't anything extra. It knows why you're here. It knows that you want to be a big ass fucking 10 foot tall space marine beating the shit out of Xenos, and it does it well. The game is fun. I give it a solid 9 out of 10. It is a game that I will continue playing for a very long time, and I really hope you guys play it too. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. Appreciate I appreciate uh, anybody who is still here and still watching. Uh, hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.